Suddenly he just starts to make noises when we go live. Yeah, that's just how he rolls. All right, guys, I think we're on. What's up? Welcome back, YouTube. Thanks so much for being here. We'll just give a uh, few minutes. Oh, I see a tech issue. Look at that. Give me a few minutes, guys. So why don't you say hello to them? All right, guys. Hello. I guess while we're waiting here, um, I'll give you guys my thoughts on some products we got from No Foods. And um, yeah, I've never tried these before. They were really good. And uh, texture was great. And they're made... A lot of the in products have the ingredient allulose, which um, I wasn't familiar with, but apparently the body doesn't recognize it as a carbohydrate. So even though on the ingredients it says the carbs on here are like 18 grams and eight grams of sugar, apparently um, the body doesn't recognize it and your blood sugar um, isn't spiked. So great products. And they sent us like a syrup, a ketchup, some pancake mix, mm, some pasta. The cookies. I had the cookies. <laughs> that was good. A lot of the comfort foods. So. All right, let me just refresh yeah. here. So we're on. So we got Spive. Sound is very low. All right, let's crank it up. We got the, uh, we can crank up the sound there, Spy. Turn it up. All right. <laughs> Facebook, the sound is going to be constant for you guys. Um, so I'm cranking it up a little bit. How does that sound, everyone? Okay. Just making the mixer, the mixer uh, nice. We might just have to uh, get a little bit closer. What is up? Okay, Someone says more volume. Guys, volume, volume. Volume. All right, we're cranking it. Let's go. Crank that. Better now? There we go. We should be we should be good guys. Is that better now? Better. All right. <laughs> um, I really, really, as always, uh, appreciate you know those feedbacks and everything. Yeah. Someone says just a little better. All right. What's going on with that? All right. Jim D in the house. Um, hmm. You know the gosh tech. We need to look at tech. Where's Sam on a Saturday? I know he's probably Come watching. <laughs> he's like, guys, I could have helped you out. Just hit me up. Okay. Um, much better. All right, someone says much better. Cool. So we're here. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna turn this down all the way. Um, Hopefully, it's better than last weekend. Oh my gosh. Left ear is loving this. <laughs> turn it up. Yes, volume is good now. Better. Right. So okay. yeah, let's talk about building muscle on keto. This is a yeah. question. I mean, I, you know, it's funny how these things kind of come and go. Like these questions. Um, we want to make sure, Deanna, too, that we're looking at Facebook right here. Facebook. Um, if you want to join the real party with the good audio and all that sort of stuff, hop on over to YouTube. <laughs> the real party. Over here, uh, <laughs> YouTube.com forward slash high intensity health. So one of the questions that, um, you know, Instagram introduced this new future where you can ask questions, right? You probably saw that. Love it. And uh, so, the, so people were, you know, I just posted this. It was like two weeks ago on a Friday. Mm. And I said, hey, guys, what, what sort of questions can I help you answer? I'm not an expert on everything, obviously, but just, you know, I've been doing this stuff for quite a while and everything. What questions do you have? And I got a lot of questions on building muscle on keto. Mm -hmm. And, you know, look, you can build muscle on a myriad of different diets. There's vegan bodybuilders. There's all meat athletes. Um, you know, there's high carb athletes. There's ketogenic athletes, right? There's, so there's a lot of ways to go about this. And so I just want to kind of see, you know, get Deanna's perspective on this because she's been lifting weights for quite a while. Yeah, since I was 19. I'm 42 now. 19? So, yeah. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> well, that's what you do when you're on scholarship, even the uh, skinny runners back in the day. So, um, yeah, building muscle, man. Um, I've been through it all. You know, and some, I would say some nutritional approaches uh, work better than others, but it's a unique thing. You have to know what's best for you. Um, for me personally, I prefer having animal meat um, and not as much fat uh, in my nutrition. And so what does that look like specifically? Like how many times a day are you having? Like just, let's just break it down. Like sure. how many meals per day? When are you having the protein and all that? So personally, I feel my best when I have an eating window. Okay. So if, um, I, I like to work out in the morning, so it's pretty often quite fasted, not hundred percent fasted because I have a little bit of pods creamer in my coffee, maybe a little bit of ghee, but it's generally below like 50 calorie mark. Right. Um, so I start my first boldest meal around like 11 o'clock and I try to finish dinner by about seven. So I try to keep my fats higher in the morning. Um, generally it takes my body about five to six hours to metabolize those fats that I'm eating because I'll have things like avocado and like whatever healthy fats at that point. And then I generally, by the end of the evening have less fat and more protein, but I'm always having high protein in, I have about three meals with, uh, during that time, my feeding window. Hi, Oliver. Oliver, and, our rooster uh, just happens to be right by our sliding glass door. For so, whatever reason, he's yeah. never normally here. So he heard protein. that the baby uh, chickens were on YouTube. Yeah. And he was like, dude, you, like, 
I've been here much longer than yeah, he's I made very these competitive. chickens and I need to be on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. So, so really quick, I, I just to finish off, just yeah. in case anybody was like kind of getting into that, um, high protein for the three meals, um, higher fat earlier on in the day and then lower fat in the evening. Um, and then, um, just not snacking between meals. So, so three meals, first one fat, is yeah. starting at 11. Last one is ending at seven. Generally some mornings I have breakfast, you know, it just really depends. Like on weekends, generally I have a little something to eat before we work out. Cause we're working out a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Like we get to the, to the gym about like 11 o'clock. So I like to eat before then. And then, um, yeah, but I've been through like raw vegan for a while. That didn't quite work for me. Um, I find I build a lot of muscle also lifting more often throughout the week as I get older too. So yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about frequency in just a little bit, but finish sure. off the macronutrients. So, um, but for a while you didn't, you weren't really like a animal protein type of person, right? So you'd have a lot Tried of eggs, that. a lot of like whey protein powder. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know what kind of stimulated that, like us buying a grass fed cow. I don't know. Um, you just kind of tinker. I think it was actually meeting Stan Efforting and listening in on that podcast right. where you're like, you know what? I'm just going to like start to just tinker around with this and, and have a little bit more animal meat and yeah. red meat specifically. We don't eat a lot of chicken or turkey. Just no. Just like principle. Not that no. they're, that meat is always bad. We just you know, love our backyard chickens, see what they eat. And it's whatever we, we like their eggs, but anyway, let's talk about, them. um, what has happened since you started eating a lot more red meat sure. in terms of strength, fat loss and so on. Sure. Oh my gosh. So first of all, um, I have a history of eating a lot of red meat. I grew up eating red meat. Um, the reason I stopped, I think it was just more because, you know, I, I just, it, it's harder to cook. Maybe, I don't know. It was more convenient having, uh, like a can of tuna or throwing in some whey and so forth. But my body definitely thrives more on red meat for sure. And um, like once a day, I'll have red meat and then I'll have like eggs and so forth as my protein source for the other meals throughout the day. But definitely have put on more muscle, had made, have made better gains, lean gains, ladies. And um, my abs show better. Um, you know, after having a kid, it's always like we look to our abs to, you know, am I lean? Am I, if I'm retaining water and so forth? I don't retain as much water after, um, while I'm eating red meat. And also my cycle, my menstrual cycle is more dead on. So it could have been anemic mm -hmm. when I wasn't Probably. having red meat. So, um, yeah, yeah, so whatever's in red meat. Just, yeah, it, well, a lot of carbon nutrients, right? My, yeah. my, one of my earlier mentors, Robert Crayon, unfortunately he passed away, um, was huge about carbon nutrients, like uh, nutrients derived from you know, animal products, m namely, you know, red meat and stuff like that. So creatine, carnitine, carnosine, mm -hmm. you know, all these different nutrients um, are, are wonderful for the brain, for the body. And, you know, you don't really get a lot of that through, and as much as we love protein powders and stuff like that, um, not you're not getting some of those micronutrients that are so critical. So again, the creatine, the carnitine, the carnosine, the beta alanine, you know, and B12, like you mentioned. So and the, um, the organ meats were the game changer for me though. Like not just red meat, like good sources of meat, like red meat, like, you know, uh, lamb heart and you know, just, just eating, just, you know, nose to tail. And yeah, that's something that, yeah. again, um, is kind of not really part of the narrative of this whole carnivorous diet movement. Not that that's bad, you know, but look, you know, just buying ribeye. And I, I, I made a video and it was very unpopular in January about <laughs> this, but it's like just buying ribeye and, you know, sirloin steaks and thinking that that's all you need to know. That's the end of the story. That's, there's a little bit more to it than that. And all you need to do is go on YouTube and type in, um, you know, type in a, a hyena killing a, a gazelle or whatever. And you will see that one of the first things that a true carnivore eats is not really the muscle meat. It's the organs, right? So right. anyway, just keep that in mind. There's a lot of micronutrients within the organs. And we, we generally shy away from these because we're not, I mean, this is part of the whole, you know, Weston A. Price movement and the paleo diet, you know, for some of you that have you know, you, you weren't interested in health when that was really very, very popular. And it still is. That's, mm -hmm. you know, Sally Fallon uh, talked about that a lot in her book, Nourishing Traditions, which has been out for, I think, 20 plus yeah. years now at this point. So um, g revisit these old texts and, um, you know, d don't shy away from this. And of course, when, when it comes to eating the organs, that's where animal quality really comes in because mm -hmm. I've bought uh, conventional. This was before I like, had any real money. I was like 24 years old, kind of got into this and stuff like that. Um, started reading more about Lauren Cordain's work and was just went to Hagen's Market in Bellingham when I was in college and bought just traditional liver. 
And I remember hating it, but it was like really gross and like really fatty. And you're, you're buying literally fatty liver from a cow, right? Because the, these, mm. a lot of these conventional cows are given grains. And we know what grains do to humans. You know, more, I, I can't remember the, the, the uh, statistic, but a lot of adult humans that are insulin resistant and overweight have fatty liver. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happens to cows, right? So you don't want to be eating the fatty liver from a cow. So right. you want to be eating healthy liver from pasture-raised grass-fed cows and stuff like that. Right. So uh, that's important. But yeah, you know, so there's a lot of different questions are coming in on YouTube. And I'm sure there's some on Facebook. I'll have to, I have to see you guys. So thanks for hanging in there. Mm -hmm. um, so three, you know, basically effectively uh, three meals per day. Mm -hmm. That's the thing with keto, right? When you want to build muscle on a ketogenic diet um, is you might need to throw in another, an, open up the feeding window right. and or have more meals because the natural tendency for many people on a ketogenic diet, and you could probably still build muscle in this manner, mm -hmm. is like one meal a day, you know? It's hard to get enough protein though, I found. I've done that before and you know, I've tried everything and just for fun, just to experiment. No, not because I wanted to lose weight, just because I'm like, well, let's just see how this works. So when people ask me, I'll know what to say. And honestly, like, it was tough, you know, plus I like to eat. I'm a foodie. So um, I just found it was really tough to get enough protein. I just don't think my body would wanted to build a lot of muscle, especially if you're active on top of that, like really active and not just lifting weights. Mm -hmm. And then I was weak, like super weak. So that could just be like female perspective. Maybe men do better with one meal a day, but personally just didn't work for me yeah. at all. Yeah. You know, that, that does work. I, I like the one meal a day thing when my uh, life load, my work and stuff is really busy yeah. and I'm not physically active. That, that's just right. my personal thing. It yeah. seems to work really well. Like when you're traveling, traveling. you're really busy, you're not physically active yeah. as much. I mean, you're doing, you know, recreational activity. You're not right. lifting weights and stuff, but, you know, right. um, that one meal a day is totally fine. Like you're traveling, you're, you're going to go visit London. Okay. Just eat dinner. Like that's it. And even like, you know, with those who have a desk job. You know, we have a lot right. of people that I see at my, um, from Microsoft who come in and they're Sedentary for the wanting to lose weight. And I have to say, and I have to say, you know what, maybe just eat once a day, you know, and have a little coffee in the morning and you may find you shed a lot of weight doing that. But um, just at least initially while you're trying to lose weight, but you don't need to eat three, three meals a day if you're sedentary. You just Absolutely. don't need it. You can just get one good meal. And when you're fat adapted too, that's one great thing about keto and burning mm -hmm. ketones is that you don't really... You're not hungry all the time, right? So it's very doable, right? But yep, love it. All right. So again, you want to build muscle on a ketogenic diet. You you probably will need to open up that feeding window, have more than just one meal a day. So yeah. keep that in mind. You're going to need to have more protein. There's a lot of people when they get when they get on any diet, particularly the keto diet, because it depends upon what books you read or podcasts you listen to. Where a lot of people are scared about protein because it supposedly you know converts into sugar and kicks you out of ketosis and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'll just say as a side note, um, I, and again, I know research maybe conflicts with this. There, raising your blood glucose doesn't really have as much of a bearing, particularly if you're physically active on synthesizing ketones. I, you know, I found that to be like, for example, we did a test where I had this continuous glucose monitor. I'm going to share with you guys the video next week. We went to this vegan dinner place. It's a very popular uh, restaurant in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Had I just said, hey, what are the most popular things on the on this menu? Just send us those. It was like a vegan pizza, some a few different things, um, and my glucose went up. Yeah, but I was still in ketosis, which was right. kind of interesting right yeah. so anyway point being you don't need to be totally scared about protein right. um protein you know it's very satiating just like fat is um protein has amino acids we talked about carne and nutrients so um don't be so scared of that and one of the things that people often ask along those lines is like well how much protein should i eat how many grams or kilograms per pound of body weight and all that sort of stuff and right um my approach is, and, and this is not so popular because I know everyone wants to know exactly what to do, what to eat, when, <laughs> how. Um, I, I mean, find me a healthy human that's unindustrialized that, that counts your macros. Right. I don't know. I mean, there, and so maybe, maybe macro counting um, is a Western construct that we need to adopt because everyone is so unhealthy and, and we're, we have all these additional exposures that unindustrialized humans don't have. But I'm really of the belief that like, we need to 
eat that is in commensurate or in parallel with our physical activity, just like we were talking about. So mm -hmm. you want to build muscle on keto? Okay, have two to three meals per day. If you're traveling or you're not lifting weights, you don't need to squeeze in two or three meals. You just you eat lighter or fast, right? So right. this is just, I don't know if you want to call it intuitive eating or just well, that's a Be good way mindful. to put it. Intuitive eating is really your goal. And, you know, maybe tracking macros to see just where you're at, really. Like maybe you think you're having 30 grams of carbs, but you could possibly be having 100 grams of carbs. Um, but yeah, it's just the protein thing. Your body is going to take what it needs, right? And I, and again, Stan Efferding's uh, video was just amazing. Um, you know, you don't want to overdo the protein too. Like you don't have to stuff in the protein because obviously he said it doesn't, you can't store protein. Is that correct? Well, you're not absorbing it, you know, as much. Right. And so that's, right. that's the thing is like, um, and that's why bodybuilders historically, you know, um, when they're bulking, will have three, 400 grams of protein per day and they're having meals every two to three right. hours. Right. There's not, right. um, the, the difference between the absorption within the GI tract between fats and proteins, fats are really readily absorbed. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's not always a true for carbohydrates and protein due to amino acid transport receptors, due to, you know, uh, osmolality within the small intestine, stuff like that. So that's kind of the difference. That's the right. interesting thing about fat is about 95% of the fat that we ingest is absorbed. So mm -hmm. that can be good and bad because the challenge about satiety is, you know, you can overeat fat bombs and bulletproof coffee and stuff. Yes, you can. And by the I've time you realize you overate, it's too late. You can, yeah, it's just, I'd done that too, man. And it, I, initially it, it would seem to work, but then you just get bloated and it's just so much fiber, especially from that coconut manna. It's just too much of a good thing. And Again, just my personal opinion, but yeah, you just really need, you're trying to cause your body to burn fat, body fat. That's right. the goal. You There's only so much fat that your liver can process, right? Right, and so that's and we talked about this in a, in a past video. If you're interested, uh, it was a Saturday YouTube live called Metabolic Traffic. If you just go into YouTube, type in Metabolic Traffic, I share with you the study on that. Um, so to get your body and and on Facebook, you might if you're interested in that, um, that's available to you as well uh, on YouTube. Because uh, we didn't share that on Facebook, I don't believe. But the, the liver, you know, really is, is a key essential metabolic organ. Mm -hmm. And when we're just giving it too much fuel, like fuel from our own fat cells that are liberating free fatty acids, fuel in the form of fat bombs and all that, it's it, it can only process so much. And right. so that's kind of the thing. And so actually, if you think about, like, and this is a side note from muscle building, if you think about ketones, they're really like fatty acid oxidation spillover products. Mm -hmm. That's what, what it is. And so we think about like all the fuels coming into the liver, um, you know, from, from exercise, from our diet, from fatty acids released from fat tissue, piling into the liver and the liver can only process so much. And then it starts making ketones when the acetylcholate pool is like, you know, the water's getting higher. Right. So if you're trying to lose weight, don't do fat bombs, guys. It's just, just don't. Let your body burn its own fat. Let it eat itself up a bit. Okay. I love that. Um, but, you know, if you, the, the only time I'll really have a quote fat bomb, um, which is not as large as you'll see on some of the Instagram photos out there, just has to be little. Okay. You don't need a ton. Is if, again, I am lifting weights later and I need just a little bit of fuel. Um, but yeah, you don't need to be making a ton of fat bombs and popping them throughout the day because again, it takes longer for fat to metabolize in your body, as Mike had just said. So excellent point. Um, all right, so one of the things that I found, and this is a little bit more controversial, and the chickens are trying to get on YouTube again. Shut up! <laughs> um, <laughs> We're gonna feed you soon. <laughs> so funny. Uh, backyard chickens are great, especially if you have kids. We love them like actually. Eggs. Yeah. Um, so. Having carbohydrates around exercise has been key for maintaining muscle for me. Uh, I, and I know this is like I'm unpopular close that. in the ketogenic diet community and stuff like that. Thanks, Deanna. Um, so here's the situation that I, I, I don't like to have carbohydrates before I work out necessarily because let's say, for example, um, you're in you anticipate you're going to have a good workout. So you, you have all this bolus of rice or carbohydrates or whatever, and then you work gets in the way and you don't go to the gym, and then you feel bad about it and whatever. So I just like to have either carbohydrates during the exercise or in the post-workout window. Mm -hmm. um, and so, again, th if you're trying to lose body fat, that may not be your goal. But you're watching this video or watching the replay or you're here now because the title is Building Muscle on Keto. That's what I found, and particularly, exercise, particularly workout days like where there's a lot of intensity, a lot of volume, you're pushing yourself. 
-hmm. Like if you're doing exercise bands and TRX, you don't need any carbohydrates. But if you're lifting weights like we talk about, mm -hmm. and if you go to courses.highintensityhealth.com, we have a, a fat adapted exercise plan that will get you doing full body exercises, particularly of the legs. Um, that's where having carbohydrates what we call intra-workout, which is during the workout or in the post-workout window. Mm -hmm. Now, this is unique because there's this unique biological mechanism um, when we have exercised and we have carbohydrates, the body and the muscle tissue particularly um, can actually absorb glucose in, from those carbohydrates independent of insulin's release. Normally, insulin is kind of like the key mm -hmm. that unlocks the door to allow glucose into the cells and then it shuts it, right? So... Um, and remember, insulin really kind of negatively, we got Nezzy waking up, uh, insulin can suppress the synthesis of fat oxidation, fat burning. So that's why in the post-workout window, it's kind of like a little, I, I, the word's kind of funny, biohack. It's a little hack for people. Now, remember, you have to exercise intensely. Yeah. Um, if you're trying to lose a lot of body fat, don't do this. Right. If you have blood sugar dysregulation, don't do this. But if you're like watching this video because you want to learn a tip to build muscle, that can help you in the post-workout window. Um, but you don't really do that. That's just something I do. No, I mean, we're all different, right? So what I do, you guys, is I'm super laid back about it. I'm not tracking the carbs or anything like that. I just go home, especially this time of year, and I pick some berries off of our bushes. Those those special keto berries, right? Right. No, I mean, at those beautiful berries in our... In our yeah, yeah, raspberries. Yeah, raspberries. We berries. have some gooseberries, and I'll just pick a few, and that's good for me, Yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so yeah. I, sometimes I do that well, you know, when time allows for that and stuff like that with right. berries all the time. Uh, oftentimes, because I do like powerlifting you know, like in the morning, uh, I'll get like some dried ape. And this is what I, I, I borrowed this tip from you know, many years of bike racing and stuff like that. I would take mm -hmm. like figs or apricots That's in my back idea. pocket uh, during a bike race and just because I didn't want to carb up you know, beforehand because it can make you fat, it can make you feel bloated, have GI issues. So right. starting like a hundred mile bike race, you know, with like a bunch of people and everything, I would just have some dried fruit right. and start to fuel the workout once it started. And I would never bonk and it would just bonk means, I know in Australia, that's a term for sex. It's not that. So when we say bonk, it means you have a low <laughs> blood sugar event. And then, uh, no, someone said that to me because Bonking. Yeah, I guess Bonking. I've heard that, but I'm Canadian. It's a Canadian thing too, I think. No, it's literally in Australia. Like if you say, <laughs> oh, we're, we're, let's go bonk, it means like, let's go have sex. But in the endurance athletic community, bonking means you're having a blood sugar crash. Interesting. Yeah, you Interesting. learn all this stuff from, I learned this from Facebook because yeah. I, I said, this was like many, five, six years ago, I said, oh my gosh, I bonked on this event. And someone said, oh, did you know that in Australia, bonking is... Uh, oh my gosh, you guys. So, yeah. Um, but so regarding again, the carbs a too... of questions here. Let's yeah, but before you get there too, guys, hold on. I just have something to say about the vegan restaurant we went to though, yes. even though it had a lot of soy and some gluten in there and stuff. So I thought I'd feel like S-H-I-T the next morning after having the meal because I like... We had pizza. We had a lot of stuff I normally don't eat just because I just don't crave that kind of thing. And... Um, the next morning I felt freaking amazing. Like, I don't know what it was. Not, I'm not like, I don't really carb up a lot, but I don't know if that means anything, but I just felt so good in the morning. So I mean, once in a while to shock your system and it didn't throw me out of ketosis. So. Someone's Anita says, be your own fat bomb. All right. Yeah, so now my I mic like is, that. yeah, that's an awesome approach. Um, yeah, I mean, everyone's different. And so that's the cool thing. Uh, so what Deanna just said is basically like, um, she had, we had a meatless dinner. We're like, oh my gosh, nothing. I meat though. Your arms, did your arms fall off or anything or you're still okay? They look you're, better the next morning after I carved up. <laughs> so that's kind I of. I was like full and had abs. It was like, Mike, look at, look at my abbs. And I was, and I was like, what, what happened? How did that even happen? I yeah, know, well, it, it's called variety and variation. And that's why tracking your macros and like Too living strict, yeah. by this, like, you know, this you know, dogmatic, you know, system is not ideal for everyone because right. look, food availability for humans ebbs and flows. It oscillates right with the seasons, right. with weather patterns, with whatever. And so that's why if you're always like, oh, I got to hit these macros, I got to hit my fat macros, I got to hit my protein macros, that's going to create disordered eating because you're going to think that you need to eat even when you're not hungry. Right. And again, that's just going to like reinforce all these 
eat bad eating patterns that you're probably already making and that got you here in the first place. So that's where tracking things can actually, what I think is tra- like tracking, just writing down, like what you yeah. measure, you can improve. So if you just write down, yeah, I had eight ounces of, you know, whatever, a sweet potato or four ounces of a grass fed bison burger, whatever, start to write that stuff down. It, so keeps you have you a mindful. Gauge. it keeps you mindful before you throw it in your mouth, right? When you're writing things down. But, and you guys, for those who are following people who are younger, um, who are like the fitness models and so forth, both men and women, you'll notice like, first of all, they're in their twenties and God bless them. They're doing amazing things by, you know, inspiring and motivating with, with, you know, their macro counting and stuff, but they're in their twenties, you guys, and things change a lot moving from your twenties into your forties and fifties and sixties. So don't get caught up in that kind of stuff. You know, you'll see them saying, Oh, I'm doing this. And then you'll see what they're actually making while tracking their macros and it's shit. You know, you're like, oh my God, have they even read the label there? Did you and just swear on the podcast? I'm Canadian. I can swear, guys. <laughs> so that, really, no, I tr- be careful hold, Time out, time out. Let's talk about that. Um, but the Canadians, no, so yeah, I've been, <laughs> <laughs> this, I, I noticed this about Canadians. Canadians are great, obviously. Um, obviously. But I was so surprised <laughs> at how frequently, and even during business meetings, Canadians swear. I was I blown I away. No, so yeah, I've been selling supplements for the past 12 years professionally. That's been my only like real job. Um, and I was working for <laughs> Zymgen in Canada, uh, helping to get that division going and stuff like that after traveling all throughout the U.S. and building different territories. And I had like my first trip to Toronto, three people said shit during the business meeting. And I was like, wow. I mean, I, didn't, I wasn't offended, but I thought it was I thought it was funny. Um, it just flies. So, guys, we have a lot of questions here, and I want to make sure. Uh, I'm sure on Facebook we have some questions too. So we'll have to get to those after this chat. And uh, uh, and just let me pause. I, I like to say this, guys. So if you like this type of format, hit that like button. As always, that just lets us know that you know we should do more content like this. If you don't like it, I totally get it. You can hit the dislike button. That's cool too. Mm-hmm. Um, we just like to you know make sure that we're curating and creating content that is of interest um, and of importance to you. Right. And on YouTube, if you see me looking down, it's because we have Facebook right here. So let's get into some of the questions. Um, let's do a giveaway. All right. So on YouTube, we got a giveaway going on here. Let's do a pop quiz. Let's do a pop quiz. So. Um, I'm going to type in. So this is going to be for uh, electrolytes from Perfect Keto. They're a show sponsor, guys. If you want to win these electrolytes, pay attention right now because we're going to send a free bottle to whoever answers this question first. So listen to my lips or check the chat. Um, Good stuff. Okay. um, What biochemical mediator helps increase um, muscle protein Synthesis. So the first one to answer that question right, it has to be right, is going to get a these new electrolyte caps from Perfect Keto. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, come on, guys. Someone says whoever, whoever, whoever. Uh, Greg says magnesium. Boom. Mark Be- Bequest says mTOR. All right. So the question was, what biochemical mediator helps to increase or promote muscle protein synthesis? Sorry, Facebook, I can't do two computers at once. Um, and that, the answer, Mark, uh, that was uh, mTOR. Okay. And so Mark Bequest, set a Bequest. I think I'm, I might be botching your last name. I really apologize. Uh, computers, I can't really see um, that close. But and, and someone says leucine. We'll talk about that a little bit. Someone says carnitine. Carnitine, actually, Brandon, that, that's a great question or great uh, comment. Carnitine helps actually in the shuttling of long chain fatty acids into either the liver or the muscle tissue and also the, the myocardial tissue. So carnitine is absolutely essential for taking those longer chain fatty acids from, say, plant-based fats and helping us to utilize them. So Brandon, send me a quick email, mike at highintensityhealth.com. I need your address and where to ship this to. It's coming to you, buddy. So appreciate that. So that's for Brandon. Perfect. Nice, nice. Uh, should we do the pre-workout? Let's do, let's do another one. Oh, I love that stuff. All right, all right, all right. I got it. Um, this one is not as black and white. Do you have Do you have one? Who has a sock monster in their house? Sock monster. Do you know what that is? Oh yeah, we have a, a lot of those things. They, it's when you buy socks, you wear disappear. them once and then they disappear and they're gone. We have that. <laughs> we have. Uh, <laughs> Nezzy, come here, bug. Hey, honey. Oh, you look Monkey's like a here. jailbird. Yes. Look at your she, so she, we're blessed that she likes to sleep in, oh, so we can do these in the morning. Stripes. So she, yeah, Nezzy wants to be on. Nezzy, do you want to talk about your baby chickens? Are you a little quiet? 
I love you. A little quiet. All right. So uh, this is a pre-workout that Deanna and I formulated. It's called Clean Pre-Workout by Myoscience Nutrition. And uh, you can win this by answering this question, right? So um, this features a form of caffeine called pure energy that uh, the molecule is such that it, it's basically a blueberry polyphenolic compound called pterostilbene mixed with caffeine. So the idea behind this is it's only 95 milligrams of caffeine, but the pharmacokinetics are such that it does, it's not too stimulatory um, and it, it's metabolized a, a, in a different way. So you don't need as much caffeine. That's a cool thing. So it's like getting the most out of the littlest input, okay? Because we know caffeine can affect sleep. It can do a lot of different things. But so the question here is, and I'm going to type it in, guys. Um, Jim D, thanks for that. Um, Mark, yes, send me an email, please. Um, Joseph says, go, Mark. All right, so the question is, um, and I'm, I'm going to... I'll, I'll say it. I know there's a lag. I'm, I'm going to say it and then I'm going to type it into the chat. So caffeine can be beneficial for the person trying to lose body fat because it helps to stimulate a biochemical process. What, I mean, there's multiple biochemical processes <clears throat> that this stimulates, but in the context of fat loss, what's the term for that biochemical process? I love caffeine. Yeah. Takes you over that edge in that workout. This stuff tastes good too. Boom, DK in the house. He was on it. Woo -woo. All right, so it was lipolysis. And um, so DK, you know the drill. I've seen you on here a lot. Um, gosh, what's this thing? Uh -uh. Something's popping up. Uh, so DK, can you uh, send me just a quick uh, email? Mike at High Intensity Health. I need your address, where to ship this to. It's coming to you, buddy. Um, You're going to love it. Yeah, we like this a lot. So, so, so there's a lot of things coming on. So someone says lipid mobilization. Uh, Jim D, that, that is absolutely true. And so the technical, the jargon for lipid mobilization is called lipolysis. And so basically, it's a long story short. So inside our body fat, so, so I don't want to pinch Are you Santa's pinching me for a so reason? I'll, so I'm, I'll pinch my own body fat, right? So, <laughs> so we got some abdominal fat right here, some subcutaneous fat. Okay. What the, the biology is such that when insulin is low and glucagon is high, what happens is, is hormone sensitive lipase. This is one HSL. Keep this in mind. Um, and I have a whole book coming out that's going to like detail this with images and everything like that that will help you guys. But uh, hormone sensitive lipase will help to liberate triglycerides. So our fats are stored in triglycerides. So think three, think a glycerol backbone and then three long chain fatty acid tails that splits it up into th these non-esterified free fatty acids. And those float around. And when we're moving our muscles can be burned directly within the muscle tissue, uh, or they can be sent to our liver to then make ketones, which can fuel our brain and so forth. Right? So that is like the first step in the fatty acid oxidation process. It's necessary. Re remember hormone sensitive lipase. This is way, way upstream. A lot of people don't talk about this. Um, and caffeine can help with that. Uh, caffeine, the, the reason why I like caffeine before you work out, because it helps to blunt the perceived exertion, right? So some of us, when we get into the gym, you know, we're not used to pushing our bodies to a certain point. Right. We're like, ah, that's painful. I don't know if I can do that. Mm -hmm. And But at the same time, that step, that pushing your body, the increasing what we call relative perceived exertion, like, I think this is a 10 out of 10. That yeah. is needed... Yeah. to cause the proper stimulus, which then causes your body to adapt. Right. It's all about adaptation, adaptation. And it one does of the take things, it over the edge. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, I'm, yeah. I, know, I was going to turn back to you, and one of the yeah. things that Deanna said is frequency as she gets older was, is key for adaptation. Absolutely. You know, and um, yeah, that caffeine, it's not like, again, I'm struggling to get up in the morning. It's nothing to do with that. Because we have people say, well, do you really need it? Mm -hmm. And it's not healthy. And... No, but I'll tell you what, when I have that, I am go focused on a freaking mission at the gym, you know, and I am fat burning. I know I am. And I leave pumped and I get in and out within an hour without the caffeine. Generally, it kind of lags, you know, it's not as fun. I'm not doing circuits in between my, my weights, you know, it's just a different experience. So I love it. And mm -hmm. I love this. Uh, so. A buddy of mine, David Hasse, has this, uh, this adage that he says it's better life through chemistry 
right? And so uh, <laughs> that can go. involve alcohol, that can involve <laughs> other substances, including caffeine. So better, you can enjoy your life in different manners through chemistry. And right. as long as it's not totally addictive or it's causing problems in other areas. So anyway, DK, uh, definitely send me that email. Um, but I won't have it like... Uh, you know, if I, I've had like two cups of coffee, so I'll have like half a package before because I don't think like we'll overdoing the caffeine. Yeah. yeah, we'll split one. But if I haven't had coffee, man, I'm all about that pouch in there. But um, yeah, it's just a perfect amount of caffeine. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it tastes good. All right, so uh, we're still here. So what, so what else, guys? We got one more question that, or one more giveaway that I want to share with you. Um, and sorry, Facebook, that you can't be part of this. And, and maybe you can hop on over to YouTube and, and j- join the auction. Um, so we got a question here. Someone says, love your explanations. Cool. Thanks for that. Coffee helps. Keep one regular. Jim D, that's great. Great point. Uh, a buddy of mine called me on Monday and he was like, dude, I want to start this intermittent fasting thing, but is it okay if I have a little coffee in the morning? Cause that's kind of what keeps my bowels moving. I was like, yeah, absolutely. Right. Like that, that's essential because, yeah. um, you know, you don't want stagnant GI motility and constipation. That's kind of really important. Right. Um, Particularly, you know, if we do, if we're trying to lose weight, uh, because, you know, what happens, there's this whole process, it's kind of complex, but it's called enterohepatic recirculation, where our body's metabolizing exogenous xenoestrogens, these are things that are in our environment, Uh, you know, for women, right, a lot of cosmetic products, skin products and all that sort of stuff has estrogen mimetics and estrogen-like compounds. We want to get rid of those, um, and our liver does a great job at doing that, but if we're constipated, they just recirculate. Mm. It's like vacuuming your house and then dumping the contents of your vacuum into your furnace so it can just recirculate. Right. That would make absolutely no sense um, if you're concerned about your health. If you're trying to piss someone off, like if I was trying to piss Tiana <laughs> off and I just dumped the vacuum, right? Uh, but anyway, you what? No, no. But that would, be, uh, that would be one of those things. So anyway, yeah. that does happen. And so that's called enterohepatic recirculation. So that's why not moving your bowels, that was a long way to explain why gut motility is key. Right. Um, all right, so we got something else from Perfect Keto. What do we want to... Uh, so it's a blood sugar support product, which mm-hmm. has one of my favorite nutrients. Um, so what, what what question do we want to ask, guys? Um, mm. Donald says, yes, but needs to count. Magnesium helps... Uh, magnesium, what it actually... Joseph says, yeah, uh, magnesium helps stimulate the bowels. What it does actually helps loose, soften up the stool by drawing in more water and actually the the magnesium that helps with that specifically is magnesium citrate because it's very poorly absorbed so when you if you're looking for buying a magnesium product for your whole body health you actually want magnesium malate magnesium bisglycinate chelate you want forms that are really well absorbed magnesium citrate is very very poorly absorbed and therefore it helps to draw water into the colonic region which helps you have a bowel movement so um Mm. great great content there uh joseph so let's see here what else we got we got uh we got a lot of questions here guys Mm. um someone says where can i find the coupon for the aura ring it's h-i-h uh, HIH is a coupon for the Juve light that we love. Uh, HIH is a coupon for the Aura Ring. So just enter in the coupon code HIH for high intensity health. Uh, mm-hmm. You can do that for Perfect Keto and save 20% off all their supplements. Just go to perfectketo.com forward slash HIH. That's our, um, that's our like standard coupon code. Nice. All right. So, Deanna, pop, do a pop quiz. What do you got? Oh, gosh. On the spot. I can do it again. I can do it if you want. Mike's but I, so good at it, you know. I'm like, ah, deer in headlights. Oh, I don't know, man. Okay, so here, here's uh, one of the things that, um, uh, let's see here. Let's see. So in uh, clinical nutrition, we talk a lot about absorption. I just mentioned, like with magnesium, like you want magnesium malate or magnesium glycinate because it's very, you know, it absorbs really well. Um, this drug that works really well for blood sugar is actually very poorly absorbed. Less than 30% of it is absorbed, yet it's very effective um, for balancing blood sugar. And there's an herb that functions very similarly to this drug. So what is that drug and what is the name of that herb? They really work well for balancing blood sugar. I know it's kind of a tough one. Um, Let me type it in. What drug? is good for someone says insulin yeah insulin will lower blood sugar absolutely but it's not it's very rapidly absorbed right so what drug is good for oops vanessa uh, for you guys on the chat see what vanessa oh my gosh so so the answers have been said but we need them in together 
Uh-oh. So we need it together. So we need the drug first, comma, and then the herb that I mentioned. And then I'm going to unpack it. Someone says metformin cinema. Someone says, like- Mark says, berberine, berberine, berberine. Um, <laughs> someone says, how much protein do you recommend per day to gain muscle? We'll address that in a minute. Someone says metformin, um, grapefruit. No, it's not that. Guys, the answer has been said. Um, so, <laughs> metformin, ginseng. Very close, Eric, but not... Metformin and ashwagandha. Metformin and ashwagandha. No, no, no. It's, you're close. You're, you, you guys are warm, but the herb is not ashwagandha. It's something else. Uh, boom, right there. T- again. Oh, there <laughs> you are again. Uh, live, laugh, uh, lift. I, yeah. Hey, by the way, I think you're in, uh, in uh, Michigan, and I think you won the, the aura ring. I remember that. Yeah, the so aura Vanessa ring. Is, is bringing it back. Uh, Vanessa, you did, well, you did great as well. Um, so, so both of you, live, laugh, lift. Um, and then Vanessa, send me an email, mike at highintensityhealth.com with your address. I uh, got stuff for you guys. So let me just unpack that a little bit because I, I mean, should I explain some of that or no? You're it's just one it. of my, It's well. one of my things that I, I just love berberine. We're coming out with a new berberine formula. Um, but the thing about berberine that's totally surprising because in the nutrition industry, we hear so much about absorption. Like, oh, well, you don't want this curcumin. You want that one because it's, it's like bio-enhanced and it's got all this special stuff to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes you don't totally want to uh, – like we've overlooked the importance of the microbiome because if you think about metformin, which is a great drug, minimal side effects. It's very effective at lowering blood sugar. It raises good hormones and all that sort of stuff that affect metabolism. It's so poorly absorbed. So, right? So wouldn't you think like, well, pff, probably doesn't work then. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you think that? Mm-hmm. But guess what? That's if you overlook the, the importance or the significance of our gastrointestinal microbiome. And so uh, metformin changes the microbiome ecology. It increases the levels of this healthy uh, genre of bacteria called Acromenzia mucinophilia. And also that is, by the way, is also increased with a healthy diet, like Deanna was talking about, exercise, protein. So again, it's not just like, you know, we can mimic the hormonal effect of metformin naturally. Mm-hmm. Um, and then one of my favorite herbs, that I, the, the answer to that pop quiz, again, was metformin and berberine. Berberine, just like metformin, is very poorly absorbed. So if you were trying to bio-enhance the, the berberine by doing some weird stuff to it, putting it in a liposome, perhaps it wouldn't be as effective for lowering blood sugar, affecting food cravings and all that. Now, I'll just say, guys, if you're trying to get into ketosis and you're struggling, take some berberine beforehand. Whew! It will jack up your ketones straight up. Um, nice. Yeah. So, so I proved that to myself when I was wearing my that continuous glucose monitor in 2017 for the first time around. Mm-hmm. I was blown away. Like, I went to the gym. My blood glucose was 60, and I felt good. Like, I wasn't like hitting a PR, right? right? But it was like it totally compressed my blood sugar, and I was burning a lot more fat for fuel. So, nice. Um, nice. Yeah, like that. Yeah, so that's it, guys. So if you're still here, please hit that like button. Again, that just lets us know that you're into this content. Um, right. And if you're on Facebook, you can hit that like button as well. We'll be checking the comments after the fact. And, uh, you know, we love doing these things. So a few things came up. You know, someone, uh, as I was watching, you know, for the for the, um, uh, for the the replay and stuff like that, um, some people were saying, um, like, how much protein? So if you missed that at about 10 minutes into this conversation, we talked about, uh, like, yeah, there, there's different sweet spots. You know, people will say around, like, one gram per kilogram of body weight, something like that, one gram per, one gram per pound of lean mass. Like, there's a lot of ratios. Right. But again... Yeah, it's you get into this situation where you're eating because you think you should eat to hit these macros and you're not hungry. Right. And that's the challenge with tracking your macros. Like there's a lot of upsides to tracking your macros to just get a general baseline of where things should be at. Right. I don't think a long term thing though it could become as bad as weighing yourself too. And back yeah. to the podcast with Gabrielle Lyons, it's not just how much protein you have in a day, it's how much you have at a time, right? Yeah. To create protein or and to a synthesize type protein of synthesis protein. and the type of protein. So that was an awesome video. I love her. You guys gotta check it out too. Yeah. So if you just type in muscle protein synthesis, I think it'll pop up in YouTube. Yeah. So um, that's it. I mean, guys uh, uh, guys and gals, it's great as always to be here with you live. We'll be here again next Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, week, uh, the 10th, I think. We probably won't because we'll be traveling. But um, yeah, we'll probably do it when we travel like we always do. We'll maybe do it from the fun. phone or something like that. Yeah. But I uh, hope you have a great Saturday. I'm going to go back and look at all your great questions and comments. And those are, that will help to create some content um, around that. And by the way... Um, one of the things that we have not yet addressed on this YouTube channel very much is emotional eating. And we know that a lot of our decisions that we make throughout the day 
are so irrational and emotionally charged and driven, right. particularly when it comes to food choices. So, because um, we're human, we're right? human. We all do. We, we do it. We struggle all the time. We do it too. Meditate. I just started. Right? You'd think I'd be doing it for years. Well, because no, I'm you've been running and you meditate when you run. <laughs> I'm joking. It wasn't the same, but I'm now I'm walking. But so um, is it different? So I know you. So, yes, so, right. yes, yes. My, um, meditation, um, in a nutshell, for me, the experience has been more awakening. And what I, does that mean? Well, you have the sense like, oh, I want, I have to meditate because it's calming, or I got to calm down. I don't think it's quite like that. At least the type I've been doing, it's like just being in in the know in the present and listening. I just listen to sounds and just don't listen to talk in my mind. And I think it really helps with just being more mindful and intuitive with eating. Really, it is a powerful tool. So I've been doing it like just maybe two or three times a day, even just for five minutes. I was telling Mike, like, you don't have to put it in your little planner, meditate in the morning because it doesn't always work out that way. And then you feel mm -hmm. bad about yourself, but just doing it throughout the day, just stopping and practicing being mindful and intuitive and perhaps before you eat, especially yeah. so that you can really think about what you're eating and then chewing and making it more of an experience. Um, so definitely I've been a game changer. Yes. Meditating. Yeah, really good question. But, you know, so Dan Harris, who we had on the podcast two weeks ago, he talks about that a lot. So he, it's not like he's, he, he gets in two hours a day, but it's not like he sits wow. there for two hours straight. And he, you know, if he's in the Uber for five minutes, he, he has a little, you know, decompress session, right? Uh, if he goes to the airport, he's got five minutes in between a meeting. So what Deanna's saying. And so that's, that's the thing, like with exercise. Yeah. Should you do 150 minutes per week? Probably. But if you only have 10 here, 15 here, 30 there, just get it done, right? right. So that's kind of the thing. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot of questions here. So someone says, did I hear the chickens in the background? <laughs> yes, they are in the background. I the door um, someone says, what dosage of berberine and what timing? You can take it whenever you want. Um, we become more insulin resistant as the day goes on. So I do recommend blood sugar, blood sugar support nutrients uh, more towards the latter part of the day. Um, but dosages, you know, between 750 and 1500 milligrams are what the clinical studies on berberine hydrochloride, the form that I recommend, and we're coming out with a new product that will help you with that. Uh, that's the dosage and the, the, the form that I suggest. So, so that's it here. Um, so guys, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff here. So Jim C's, Jim D says there's a trade space apparently between, uh, I'm going to zoom in here, uh, growth repair and reproduction push one too far. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing. So you know, um, you know, sometimes hypertrophy and sports performance is in conflict with longevity. And so just understand that, right? And so um, right. they're not always synergistic. I mean, we think like, oh, healthy muscle, like muscle's healthy, and it is, and it's linked with longevity. Right. But, you know, there's, it's a U-shaped curve, and sometimes more is not always better. Right. Um, balance, balance is always best with anything. Cool, guys. Well, uh, it's been awesome to be with you on a Saturday. I hope you have a great weekend, great yeah, rest of your day. Thanks for joining us. And, again. Uh, I love it. Did I mention um, the interview with Joanna Wilcox? It's great. Uh, check it out. Um, and that's where we talk. she unpacks emotional eating and food addiction. Awesome. And the book Irresistible is great. So um, we'll, we're going to sign off. Facebook, I really, hopefully the audio was okay. I know we were kind of looking at, at that camera, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Yeah. YouTube, it's always great to be with you. Thanks for being here, subscribing. And we'll catch you next week. Sounds good. All Happy right. Saturday, guys. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Adios.